Hey everyone, welcome to the cabin. My name is Alec Brits, and today we're checking out a whole bunch of stuff from Phoenix Audio. We've got the Gyrator EQ, the Pivot TC, and the N90 DRC compressors. Big thanks as always to Studio Care for supplying the review units. If you enjoy what you watch here, please consider subscribing. If you really enjoy what you watch here, please consider dropping a super thanks so that I can upload more consistently. Let's jump right in. A couple of things to keep in mind across all Phoenix units is you'll notice certain things are kind of repeated across them. The first of these is their unique amplifiers. They're coated in this in intense epoxy resin so we don't actually know what's going on inside of these guys there's some kind of operational amplifier and a few other bits the other thing that is unique to all phoenix products is their unique output transformer these are all hand wired here in the uk and then shipped over to the states to be built the other thing that's unique is these silver boxes that you see over here these are the power supplies for the 500 series units this takes the 16 volts that is supplied by the 500 series rack and then boosts it right up to 24 volts so you have full headroom across all of these units. All of the Phoenix units are all through whole hand soldered pieces of kit. The first module we're going to take a look at over here is the gyrator EQ. Over here we have all of the different bands of the equalizer and then we have the output over here. The top shelf gives us three different frequency options. We have Sheen, 15k and 10k. Then we have the upper mid range which gives us 6k, 3k and 1.6k. And then we have the low mid which gives us 800, 400 and 200. And then we have the low shelf which gives us 130, 80 and 40. All of these are switched using these nice really sturdy feeling switches. And all of the potentiometers are indented. These are not switches so that means that the steps are not switched but they are indented so being able to do recalls is nice and easy. Just like across all other Phoenix units, the output part drives the output transformer. So if you want to add color, you simply drive the output. We then have our high pass filter over here and then our metering on this side. Alrighty, so for the first example, we're going to pop the gyratory cues on the drum bus. So as we can hear over there, as I'm boosting the upper mid-range frequencies, it's starting to kind of bring life into the drum kit. While still maintaining the same volume as it was before, it appears to feel a lot louder and makes it just sit and sparkle in a mix a lot better, which allows me to turn the drums down in the mix so that they're not peaking the limiter, but still have them feel like they're heard. Alrighty, next up we're going to be working with bass guitar. So let's see how it sounds. <laughs> So that's doing the thing, that uh, driving the output transformers and again highlighting all of the key points of the bass that I want to bring out and then using that 10k shelf and just rolling it right down so we don't get any of the coming from the amplifier. So for the next example we're going to be using the gyrator on vocals. I have tried falling in and out of love, but I'm better when I, I'm better when I am lonely, give my heart back. I need a feeling control Cause I'm better when I I'm better when I'm lonely I have tried Falling in and out of love But I'm better when I I'm better when I'm lonely Give my heart back I need a feeling control Cause I'm better when I I'm better when I So, the gyrator EQ this isn't the first time that I've had a small experience with this. I demoed one out a couple of years ago and thoroughly enjoyed what it did. But using it for this video really highlighted just how much you can push things without it sounding harsh or aggressive. The high pass filter I feel like would be lovely to have a couple of different selections like maybe 40, 80 and 120. But with it being just locked where it is, it's not the end of the world. You can still do that beautiful thing like I did with the bass where you cut the bottom and then boost right around it where it makes a nice shoulder where the cut frequency is. 
The thing that really shines for me with this is being able to push some of the harsher frequencies without them kind of like frying your eyeballs. So all in all, the Gyrator EQ hits a really beautiful sweet spot where it's quite flexible to be used on a wide variety of sources, but at the same time never gets in the way with too much character unless you want to drive it. The next unit to look at is the N90 DRC. Starting at the top of the N90 DRC, it all begins with our threshold control. Like with all Phoenix things, this is an indented part. We then have our bypass and compressor engage switch over here. Then we have our ratio control. This is a potentiometer. You can go all the way from two to one to infinite compression. Then we have our auto function over here for release. Then we have our fast attack or normal attack modes over here. Then we have our release control over here. Then we have our gate section here. To switch it in, you simply hit that down. Then we have our threshold control over here. Then we have our key input. Now, if you want the key to be active, that is activated by this little bantam input on the side. Then we have the gate range on the side. We have our release times, and then we have our output gain. The output gain applies to both of these units. Then we have our metering. When this is switched in over here, you can see the gate is active with the red LED turning on and off to show the timing of the gate. And then the green LEDs show how much gain reduction is happening with the compressor above. I think one of the only things that I don't like about this compressor is the fact that everything is so tightly put together and I have quite wide fingers, so it's quite hard for me to get in between and change settings. One other thing that I would change about this is the fact that all the lettering for the gates is in this dark blue color. And right now I'm filming with studio lights where everything is extremely well illuminated and it is still quite hard to see. For the next example we're going to be using the N90 DRCs as a pair over the drum bus. These are not linked and I'm not being polite with the amount of compression but I kind of enjoy what they're doing. So as we can hear over there, that is making the snare just feel so much longer and at the same time kind of taming some of those harsher transients that are appearing at the top end of the stick hitting the cymbal. One of my favorite things to do with piano is to compress it in mid-side so the middle is nice and controlled but you also get a little bit of extra width coming from the stereo image of the piano. It can also allow the piano to wrap around a vocal really nice and easily but for now let's listen to the piano in solo and see how these Phoenix compressors deal with something as harmonically rich as a piano being hammered away by me. So as you can hear over there, especially in the verse parts, you can hear the compression blooming and making the piano open up. But because it's in mid-side, it just feels so like wide and controlled. Alrighty, so I've set up the gates on the kick and the snare. So in this example, I wanted to highlight both the compressor and the gate, but using it on vocals. The problem with recording so many vocals at once is that often the sound of the breaths are slightly out of time. Now, I would usually just automate every single one of them to ensure that the breaths come in and out at the same time so as to not be distracting. But I thought, hey, what if I use the gate to kind of just soften the sound of the breaths a little bit in between the phrases? Give my heart back. I need a feeling control Cause I'm better when I I'm better when I am lonely Give my heart back I need a feeling control Cause I'm better when I I'm better when I am lonely Give my heart back I need a feeling control Cause I'm better when I I'm better when I am lonely So it's obviously quite subtle 
but what I like about it is that compression naturally brings up the sound of the breaths while the gate is kind of controlling them. So it's quite handy to have both of these features on one little 500 series unit. So, the N90 DRCs. These were designed by David Rees, the same guy who designed the Neve 2254 compressor, but that's about where the similarities end <laughs> between the 2254 and this device. Really smooth sound and compression. I love the way that it kind of just smooths out the overheads without anything kind of becoming goopy, but at the same time you can drive the output transformer to be able to get some of that color and saturation added. The addition of a gate is obviously quite welcome, but unfortunately for me, I wouldn't find myself using it as often as I thought I might have. There's a few improvements on this that I would really love to see added, maybe an option to have no gate and to include a sidechain high pass filter as well as a blend control. But at the same time, I do understand that if somebody's tracking a lot of bands and they do use a lot of closed mic gates, then maybe this would be perfect for them. So even though there are a few things to be updated or maybe changed in the future, what I can 100% say for certain is that they sound great and they're built really, really solidly. The next unit to talk about is the Pivot TC. On the front of the device, we have our switch over here between line in and jack in. We have DI in and through. This is the same DI circuit as the Phoenix Nice DI or the N8 that I use here every day. It's a beautiful high fidelity 10 mega ohm DI that will really bring the most out of anything you plug into it. Then we move on to the very interesting part, which is the Pivot TC. I'm gonna use the FabFilter Pro Q3 to show you exactly how this EQ curve works, but it's an extremely powerful thing where you select your center frequency and then by pressing darker, it will take away what's above it and increase what's below it. And then if you make it brighter, it will do the opposite. So it will take away bottom end and add top end. What I really like about this is that even if this is in bypass, you can still drive the output transformer really nice and easily. We then have our metering over here. Things that are missing from this DI are a low cut, phase invert, and a minus 20 dB pad. Alrighty, for the next example, we're gonna be using the pivot on the piano. Pivot on the piano, pivot on the piano. Try to say that five times fast. One of the hardest things to do with piano is to be able to have it be present, but at the same time, not be too muddy. But this is where the pivot really excels because it can control some of the low end information and then push some of that high end up without it being too harsh. And because that ratio is the same, it feels quite natural. <laughs> So as we can hear over there, that is really controlling some of that low mid energy, but at the same time we're getting that beautiful upper mid range clarity without any harshness. So now we're gonna use the pivot on acoustic guitars. Once again over here, we wanna control those lower mid ranges and kind of push some of the upper end. What's interesting to me over here is that there's quite a big distance between 160 hertz and 800 hertz. And I wish that there was an option for like a four or 500 hertz uh, center point on the pivot. Then we might be able to mitigate some of that boxiness that we're hearing from that 700 to 1K region. All right, so here's the Moog without any pivot EQ on it. Now let's play around with some of the different frequency options. And then conversely, you can also thin it out quite a bit. The Pivot TC. What I love about this device is the fact that there is a full fat Phoenix DI built right into this box. The headroom on this device is crazy as you heard with the Moog. You can really hit the pants off of it and then you can drive the output if you'd like to. So let's talk about the Pivot EQ itself. This is something that on the face of it, you might think to yourself, well, why would I want to use two shelves that kind of counteract each other? But as we heard, it's such a powerful way to change the overall timbre of an instrument really quickly. I think having this paired with the DI is a really good option because you can quickly do some general tone shaping while tracking things directly into your computer. Overall, the build quality once again is really good. I love that when you step through the different frequency options, you can hear the relays clicking. So 
you know that everything is built and put together really well. My favorite thing about Phoenix Audio is the fact that they're not emulating anything. They're always pushing boundaries to be able to allow us musicians to try new ways of processing audio, which is fantastically fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've watched here today, then please consider subscribing. To those of you who have subscribed, thank you so very much for doing so. If you'd like to support the channel in any way, then please consider dropping a super thanks. That will allow me to do this more consistently and more often. Most importantly, I hope that you're all looking after yourselves and you're being kind. I'll see you in the next one.